What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and today's video is actually brought to you by Patron Blades, but more on that later. So it seems like Thursdays have been the day for theories on the channel lately, and I've got another one for you guys today. Since Kanto has been getting so much attention lately with recent rumors, I've been thinking a lot about it myself, and one thing that's recently stood out to me is Erika. Erika is of course the gym leader in Celadon City, but there could have originally been way more to her character than we actually see in the games, so why don't we go ahead and check it out. Okay, so the theory here is that Erika was actually a kimono girl at one point, either in terms of the lore of the Pokemon world or from a development standpoint, so let's go ahead and take a look at the evidence. So the first and most obvious piece of evidence is what Erika is wearing. Erika is dressed in the traditional Japanese kimono, which despite Kanto and many regions of the Pokemon world being based on areas of Japan, you really don't see that many people in kimonos. There's more of a modern sense to the Pokemon world, so Erika definitely stands out in that regard. The other people who kind of stand out in this regard are the kimono girls, of course. The girls who live in Ecruteague City and all train a member of the Eevee family, so we have this distinct connection between the two right off the bat, however, obviously a pair of similar looking clothing isn't enough to establish a relationship between the two, so let's go ahead and dig a little deeper. Now the other interesting thing here about the Kimono Girls is their evolutions. Of course, each sister trains a member of the Eevee family, and what's interesting about how this relates to Erika is it really actually ties in with another theory I talked about recently on the channel. In my 10 Cancelled Pokemon Evolutions video, I talked about my personal theory that there could have been a grass-type evolution planned for Generation 1, just because we see the types of grass, water, electric, and fire so closely related in that generation, and the evolutionary stones that are available to you in that generation, especially through purchase at the Celadon department store, which by the way is where you get Eevee and this is where Erica is, so it all kind of ties in nicely, are the Leafstone, Firestone, Waterstone, and, St and Thunderstone. So it all kind of, to me, suggested that who knows, maybe that could be the case that there was originally a grass type evolution plan for Gen 1. And now when you tie it in with this Erica theory where if she was a kimono girl, she would have had to have had an evolution and she just so happens to be the gym leader in the city where you buy the stones for the evolutions and where you get Eevee herself kind of adds a little more to that theory and this and that theory kind of adds a little more to this where it possibly gives her an evolution that she could have had had she been planned to be a kimono girl. Another very interesting thing to note here about Erika is the badge that she gives you once you defeat her. She'll actually give you the rainbow badge if you defeat her in a battle, which is interesting considering that a rainbow doesn't really have anything to do with the grass type, and if you try to make some sort of connection, it's gonna be a stretch. However, what a rainbow can be tied to is Ho-Oh, who is the rainbow Pokemon, and we all know, of course, that Ho-Oh likes to reside on top of the Tin Tower, which is in Ecruteague City, and the Tin Tower and Ho-Oh is something that the Kimono Girls look after, and it's essentially their job and their role in the city to do so. So the fact that we have an even closer connection to Ecruteague City through her badge, which doesn't seem to relate to the rest of the city or her type as a gym leader, gives us a little more credence to the idea that, who knows, maybe she was originally planned from a development standpoint to be a gym leader, or at the very least, maybe from a lore perspective, maybe she's like the long lost Kimono Girl sister. And last but not least, kind of the cherry on top to this whole idea is the fact that Erika runs an all-girls gym. Now this is very interesting as it relates to the Kimono Girls, because the Kimono Girls are the Kimono Girls. It's an all-girls group, and Erika running an all-girls gym is somewhat of a unique thing amongst the rest of the gym leaders of the Pokemon world. So the fact that we have all of these other similarities that tie Erika with the Kimono Girls, and now we have the fact that she runs this all-girls gym, which is consistent with the all-girl aspect of the Kimono Girls, once again really kind of starts to add to the momentum and starts to get your mind thinking that hey, you know what, maybe Erika was indeed a Kimono Girl, either in plans for development or at some point in the past of the Pokemon world before the events of Generation 1 took place. So there we have it. Honestly, I think this whole idea of Erika originally being a Kimono Girl somehow is very interesting because of how well all of the evidence for it actually ties together. In fact, there's so much evidence for this idea that there's actually going to be a very interesting part 2 to this theory coming on Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell so you can know as soon as the video goes live. 
Like I said earlier though, this video was brought to you guys today by Patron Blades. Patron Blades is a website that provides a subscription service to bring high quality razors right to your door every month, but with a really cool twist. Patron Blades works with creators like myself so that whenever someone signs up for their subscription service, they give part of the profits to the creators they work with to allow you to support the creators you love to watch while at the same time getting something for yourself that you probably need anyway. If you are at all interested and want to support the channel, you can click the link in the description below or on the iCard at the top of the screen and use the code HOOPS at checkout to sponsor the channel with your purchase and directly support future videos like this, and any and all contributions are extremely appreciated. Lastly, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, because I will be back with another one very soon, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.